Hi everybody, welcome to Floss Tube number 53. I hope you guys had a wonderful week this past week with Thanksgiving. I know we did. Um, our oldest son and his wife were able to come home for a few days. And so we um, raided my youngest son's apartment. I knew there was no way we could have Thanksgiving dinner with everybody in the camper. And so I told my youngest son, I said, we're coming to your house, your apartment this year. So it's payback time. I'm going to come make a mess in your kitchen this time. And so he was a good sport about it. We all um, met up at his apartment and had a great Thanksgiving dinner. We were able to get a lot of visiting in. And so it was just a fantastic week. And I hope you guys were able to visit with friends and family as well and have a good time this past week. A uh, little update on the house. You see where I'm at. I'm still out here, and I'm going to make this short and sweet because it's kind of chilly out here today. Um, they did blow insulation in the ceiling, so if you can see all the white stuff up behind me, that's the insulation that they blew in. So that's progress. That's one more thing to check off the list. Um, we have a little bit more. They're putting in some railings and a little walkway that goes out over the great room, and that's going to happen this next week. The siding guys are put, putting a board and batten siding on the outside. And once that's complete, they have probably nearly three quarters of it done. Once that's complete, they're going to paint the outside and lay the brick around the bottom. So I'm super excited about that. That's gonna kind of give me that final, um, okay, that color was a good choice. You know, it's kind of scary. You're, you're looking at little chips of paint and trying to find a house somewhere nearby that's maybe been painted that color. And you just hope it looks like that little bitty piece you've picked out. So um, keep your fingers crossed and I'll keep you posted on, on that as we progress. So that's the progress on the house so far. Um, this week, I wanna come to you and share a sampler on Sampler Sunday. And I hope this post today, um, the last couple times, because we're having to work off of a hot spot in the camper. It's taken two to three days for my videos to upload. So I am videoing this on Sunday, which is, I'm calling Sampler Sunday. But who knows, it could be Wednesday before it gets posted and you guys get a chance to watch. So keep your fingers crossed, it happens sooner than that. I have a little school sampler that I'm working on for market. Um, I know I like to do my own uh, model stitching, although this year I may have to recruit somebody to help with the, a little, a few pieces because I've got several samplers I really want to bring to market this year. But this piece is one that I really like and um, mainly because I used to teach school. So it's a schoolhouse sampler and I'm going to, I better hold something up behind it so you can see it. And um, has a little verse, a pretty berry border around it. And then the school in the middle, St. Mary's Girls National School. Now, when I worked on reproducing this one, the first thing I noticed is that the linen count was different than just a straight 40 count, which is what I'm stitching on. And so that caused the model to be a little more horizontal than vertical. And that's okay because it still has all the aspects of the original in it. And another thing that I noticed when I first purchased the sampler I noticed that up at the top, each word is done in a different color. And I thought at first, well, the stitcher, E. Hawkreach, just did that because they wanted it to be colorful. Maybe they just liked color, and so that was their way of um, just making it fun. I know as a young girl growing up, you know, we would write our letters and make little curly cues on them or do a different color crayon for each letter that we were writing just because we thought it looked pretty. So I thought that's probably what this young girl was doing as well. But after I charted this, I noticed that the words are very, very close together. And had they been stitched all in the same color, it would have been very difficult to read the verse that's on this sampler. It would have just looked like one word after one letter after another. It would have been very hard to read. And so that made me think that she probably stitched this 
with the different colors. So you could read the verse a little easier. And I'm gonna read this verse to you really quick. It's one of my favorite parts in the Bible, because, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. It says, the Savior's love for little children, and they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. And I think the reason I like this, I can just see um, maybe Jesus sitting there and all these little kids running around, and, and we know how little toddlers and small children can be. Sometimes they just get into everything. And it was probably driving the disciples nuts. They were like, these kids need to sit down. They need to be calm. They're running all over Jesus. They're climbing on him. They're trying to tell him stories. They need to be still. And Jesus was like, no, let them come unto me. This is, this is what I want. And I, I just can picture this passage happening. And so I think that's why it brings a smile to my face. Um, anybody that's been around little kids knows you, you're not going to get them to sit real still. And I think Jesus knew that as well. Um, on this, um, I was fortunate in that the color was pretty intact. The front, this is the, the front, and you can see how bright red that is. Not much fading at all. And especially if I turn it over, and this is the back, the color is very similar to the front. So somebody took care of this and kept it out of the bright sunlight. Um, another thing that I really liked about this particular sampler is the schoolhouse. If you can see all those columns, and there is some damage to those columns just over time, but those are done in satin stitch, and that just gives it a little added texture. And so I'm gonna continue doing that on the model as well. And I'll show you what I've got done on the model. I have the outside border and I've started in with the alphabet and the words. And so hopefully I'll get a lot of progress done this next week. Um, I don't have any travel coming up. I don't have anything major going on next week, so I'm hoping to get a lot of stitching in and done on this pretty soon. Um, I am researching it, and I'll tell you what I found so far. Um, I just started searching for St. Mary's Girls National School, and there are lots of girls national schools. There's one in Ireland, there's one in England, um, but there was one in the United States. And at first I thought, well, it has to be the one in England. But the more I started looking, there's one in Raleigh, North Carolina that was started in 1842, which was the year that this sampler was done. And it started with 13 girls and the total of people that registered for that first session was only 21. Now, I've got to see if I can find, now just very quick searches, I haven't located the list of those 13 girls yet. So I'm hoping when I locate that, maybe I'll find a hawk reach on there. I don't know, may not, but I'm, I'm hoping that I will. Um, the outside, and what makes me lean towards um, the girls, St. Mary's Girls National School in Raleigh is that it does have St. Mary's at the beginning of the, the title. It's not just Girls National School. And so that was a clue to me. Also, I found a picture and that picture looks very similar to the school on this original. And I'll show you this school again. And we'll talk about how it looks very similar. So if I hold this up, if you see at the top, it has that little round window. And the St. Mary's Girls National School here in Raleigh has a window very similar to that. Also, you see this pinkish color that they have for the school. The brick on the building is also kind of a reddish pink color. So that was another clue to me. These columns that you see down the front, the original St. Mary's Girls National School in Raleigh also has columns down the front. Then there's that front door. It has, looks like a transom across the top. And the door on that building also had a transom. There were some differences. It didn't look exact. It had a few more columns than what you see here on this sampler, but it looked 
a lot like it. So that kind of made me think, well, that could be, you know. Um, she may not have stitched the building exactly as it was, but there were enough um, similarities that made me think it could be it. And so then I started searching for E. Hawk Reach in the United States because my past searches had been just in England. And when I put in E. Hawkridge and her birthday, she was 10 when she stitched this. And so that would have made her born, being born around 1832. I had one name popped up, said Fanny E. Hawkridge. And she was in a New Jersey census in 1895. And it said her birth was sometime around 1835. Um, to, uh, up to 1875, so that's a big range, um, but that's a possibility. And she was born in Clark, Arkansas, and that just blew me away because I'm like, what if this really is the E. Hawkridge that did this school sampler? I live in Arkansas. I was born in Arkansas. Wouldn't that be too cool? So, um, we'll see. Uh, who knows? It, this could not be it at all, but then it could. So, that's part of the fun of reproducing these samplers is studying and researching and trying to find out the history behind it. So, I'm, I've still got some digging to do before, before market because I'd like to put and include as much of this history as I can in her chart. Um, this school was a school for young women. It was founded in 1842 by Aldert Smeads, and it started out as a school for boys, and then that was shut down and reopened as a school for girls. And um, it said here the total was 21 that was enrolled for the first session. And the amazing thing is this school is still open today. It's still a very active girls' school. So that was kind of interesting. So I may end up having to give them a call and um, give them my E. Hawkridge information and see if they have any history with her name in it. So that may be an option since it's still open. And that doesn't always happen that way. Lots of times it's a guess on, on our part when we're reproducing. So I'm looking forward to um, continuing to dig into this and see if I can locate her. Um, some other bits and pieces that I noticed. It is very symmetrical on the bottom. You see the berry basket, and I love doing berry baskets, some trees. Same thing on this side. And then once again, the house and the lettering with some just odd and end little borders up across the top. So hopefully I'll have more to show you next week on my progress on this. This has been a fun stitch. Um, and just kind of a, tr a trial and error of trying to figure out who E. Hawkridge is. Uh, another thing I did want to just touch on, because this is out of the frame. Um, I know I had someone ask me a while back, sorry, I've got my phone balanced very tediously. My husband had my car in my little um, stand to hold, that holds my phone normally was in the car. So I'm like, you've got my car and I need that. So that was the racket you heard earlier. He was sneaking up here trying to give it to me. So um, we're just making do today with this other. Um, but anyway, I had someone ask, when you take them out of the frame, what do you find? And sometimes they have been, um, you know, tacked to a backing board. Sometimes they're laced. Um, you hope you don't find it where they're glued because that makes it very difficult. A lot of mine, however, have been nailed. And lots of times they would have taken a little piece of pine board that could have been maybe the bottom of a drawer um, or the back of a drawer or a cabinet that they were no longer needing. So they would take that. Um, lots of times you would find where they had stitched based in muslin on the back of their sampler, and that kind of offers some protection, especially against the wood. You don't really want your sampler up against the wood. However, if they have that muslin backing on it, that does offer some protection. This particular piece was on wood, but there was no backing and it was nailed. And that is unfortunate lots of times because they have nailed it right into, and I'm gonna see if I can fold it where you can see, 
that's the very edge. And you can kind of see those nail holes all the way around there. Fortunately, I was able to kind of pull them out without ripping it, but I still have a, a big nail hole there. Um, once I'm finished with this uh, model stitching it, I'll have this conserved and reframed. It came in a beautiful original frame that I've got, and I'm gonna see if they can conserve it and use that frame because it's just a beautiful burl type frame. So um, I would like to continue to use that. But then you have pieces like at the top, this had been torn. I don't know if when they nailed it or if someone else tried to take it out and you can see how close it is to that stitching. So unfortunately, sometimes that happens. I'm sure when they nailed this on that board, they were hanging it up. They were proud of the work that um, E. Hawkridge had done and just wanted to, sh to show it off a little bit. And um, they had no idea that anyone would ever buy it, take it out of the frame and try and do something with it. So that's, that's unfortunate that we have those nails that we have to deal with sometimes. But a lot of the samplers, you will find that. And one thing I will say, if you see that, that's a pretty good indication it's authentic. It, this definitely is an authentic old sampler. It's not one that someone has tried to make look old. It, it definitely is an antique sampler. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing E. Hawkridge and stay tuned. You can see more as I get a little bit further along. I have another sampler that I, I'm going to share with you next week. And, um, it's also on the list for market and it's a small, sweet little needlepoint sampler, but I'm going to convert it over to cross stitch. I love the saying on it. Um, plus it has a cat on it. So those were the, the two things that caught my eye on this sampler that I'll show to you next week. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday and a great next week. I plan to get a lot of stitching in. I hope you do as well, and we'll talk again soon. Bye.